Hey guys, Retro Gaming Maniac here, and I have another pickups video for you. Now, this pickups video, um, to avoid being like an hour long, I'm just gonna go and blast through everything, show you what I got. I'm not gonna give too much of a story on it, but I'll show you what I have. And I haven't done a pickups video in like four or five months, so I've got a ton of stuff that's just built up. I um, mean, you know, I've sold a lot of stuff, I've traded a lot of stuff, got store credit, got all this stuff on the cheap. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you what I got. Like I said, I'm going to blast through it, so uh, hopefully the video isn't too long, so let's check it out. Alright, first up, I have a Pikachu Edition Nintendo 64 with uh, Hey You Pikachu, and I actually got this from Second and Charles. Somebody was going to trade it in, and uh, once they find out how much uh, Second and Charles was going to give them, they, they got you know pissed off and uh, decided not to do the trade. But uh, anyways, I got that. Uh, it has a controller as well. I paid more for it than uh, Second and Charles was going to give them, but they don't give hardly anything in store credit, so I still came out on top with that. Uh, next up is I have a stack of games here. I have Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver for the Dreamcast. And I'm going to set everything over here. Uh, Centipede for the PS1. Martian Gothic, which is a survival horror game on the PS1, and it's one I've never really heard of before, and I checked it out and uh, looked at it on YouTube, and it looks pretty cool, actually. It's like a Resident Evil clone, really. But uh, I might do a video on that, maybe a uh, PS1 Hidden Gems or something. Uh, next up is Star Wars Masters of Karasas Terracasi, which is basically a... which I may have shown that in my other video, but it's a Star Wars uh, fighting game. Uh, Star Wars Dark Forces. I have Gundam Battle Assault 2. And some of these I may have shown in another video, so I apologize if that's the case. Uh, we have Blue Stinger on the Dreamcast, which is a Resident Evil kind of survival horror game. We have Silent Hill. Now, this is the green label. And, uh,. Very good game. Very, um, I won't say it doesn't have a lot of jump scares, but it has a nice um, environment. Like the the, uh, the music and the tone the game sets is just awesome. It has a very creepy feel. Uh, Medal of Honor Underground. This is one I used to have a long time ago, and it actually got stolen from me, so I had to get that. I have a few Turbo Graphics 16 games. I have Alien Crush. And there's nothing on the back of a Turbo Graphics 16 game. But Alien Crush, Dungeon Explorer, there's another PS1 game, Resident Evil Survivor, which I did a Let's Play on that not too long ago. Alright, a couple of PS3 games, I got Enemy Front, which is a World War II PS3 shooting game, which you don't see too many of those anymore. Uh, Medal of Honor Airborne, this is an older uh, World War II game, this is actually a more recent one, so cool to see the World War II shooters are still around somewhat. Uh, you probably saw this in my Tiger GameCom review, but I have a sealed copy of Resident Evil 2 on the Tiger GameCom. Hopefully you can see that. And of course I have the Tiger GameCom. Alright. I have Indiana Jones, The Greatest Adventures on the Super Nintendo, which is actually a pretty fun game and it takes you through all of the uh, original movies, so it's really cool actually. And now, uh, back when I was with Gaming Central, I'm um, not there anymore, but back when I was with Gaming Central they had a um, Christmas uh, gift swap, Secret Santa type thing, and uh, the retro zapper, Andre, got me these four games, and this is really cool that he did this. Here we go. So this is the first one, it's Dragon Ball Z Super Butoten, I think is what it's called. Dragon Ball Z uh, fighting game for the Super Famicom. This is a series I loved um, growing up because my friend had it and I always wanted it, but you know, I've, I only played the first one. But uh, uh, Super Butoden 2. I hope I'm saying that right. 
3, and Hyper Dimension, which is the one I really wanted. And all these will actually play on the uh, Retron 5. And my phone just went off. So. Alright, next up we got a couple of PS Vita games. We got Resident Evil Revelations 2 on PS Vita. Very good game. Has a few uh, frame rate problems, but very good game. Has a lot of extras already in the Vita version. Uh, we have Killzone Mercenary. I used to have this game, and I either loaned it to a friend, sold it, or something, but I just couldn't find it, so I got it again. Uh, Earth Defense Force 2 on the Vita. Have not played this one yet, but I definitely plan on checking it out. Uh, let's see here, we got a few more things here. Still got a lot to go, sorry. Uh, Resident Evil Mercenaries 3D on 3DS. Contra 4 on the DS. Very hard game, I suck at this game. The original Contra I do pretty good, but this one, man, it's a hard game. This one I got at a Goodwill for five bucks. It is sealed. It's uh, Gran Turismo 2 by PS1. Uh, this one's sealed as well as a Riven sequel to The Mist for the PC. Uh, Star Wars Rebel Assault 2, which is actually a pretty decent game. It's one of those FMV type uh, type games. It's a pretty good game. Um, now I've got a stack of PS2 games here. I've been kind of going on a PS2 binge here lately, trying to collect uh, a lot of the PS2 games. And I got a really good deal on all these. Um, but I got Clock Tower 3 for the PS2. I got Siren, which is a Japanese survival horror game. Sorry, my dog's barking. Uh, Return to Castle Wolfenstein. I think that one was 99 cents. Uh, Soldier of Fortune 2. This one I got for 99 cents as well. It says 2.99, but a lot of these prices aren't accurate because I've got them on sale, or had store credit, or they gave me a discount. Uh, this is Extermination, which is uh, basically a Resident Evil uh, clone, but you're in space, if I'm not mistaken. You're either in space or in like some Arctic land. I'm not really sure. Star Wars Obi Wan. Star Wars Racer Revenge, which is actually really good if you like the uh, Nintendo 64 versions. Uh, Orphan, Scion of Sorcery, which is pretty cool. It's based off an anime, and it's a very early PS2 release. And uh, But it's actually really good. I like the story. It's got horrible voice acting, though. Uh, see, Smuggler's Run. This one was like two bucks, so I got it. It's not sealed. They just resealed it, but... Uh, Constantine, which is actually a pretty decent game. If you like survival horror, it's got a lot of uh, scary stuff in it there. Pretty cool. Cursed Mountain. This is kind of a hidden gem on the Wii, I think. It's a survival horror game. And you go up into the mountains, and uh, you get this staff, and you use the Wiimote to fight off ghosts and stuff like that. But uh, Crimson Skies on the Xbox. Heavy game. That manual must be thick. Um, Fatal Frame 2. There we go, this is a good one. Uh, Daytona USA on the Sega Saturn. This is the one that has that uh, Daytona song in it. Daytona. And then I got Resident Evil on the Sega Saturn. Um, this one I got via store credit. I ended up paying like only 20 bucks for this one because they had like $40 in store credit. So. These I got at Goodwill. Big Mother Truckers 2. As far as I know, all these are complete. Uh, Sopranos. Road to Respect, this is the limited edition version. It's got kind of a foil, shiny case on it. The Bully, which is one I remember when The Bully came out and I never got a chance to play it. But it's got this nice kind of raised, like, 3D uh, print on the front. I think it's a Rockstar game. Yeah, Rockstar. And they make good games. And here's a Met game. I love Met games. So I try to get them whenever I can. This one was only $3.99, $4.99. But it's called uh, Battle Engine. Pila, I guess. But it's actually pretty cool, and it's kind of a big open world type mech game. Uh, I got The Suffering. This is one I've been wanting for a long time, and it's actually pretty good. I'm probably going to do a let's play on it, but it's uh, Resident Evil Dead Aim. Uh, Gun Griffin Blaze, and it has this really cool kind of foil, um, I don't know, foil case on it. It's really cool though. And it's a, it's a mech game as well. I don't know if I showed you the back or not. But. 
Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings. I actually like these Indiana Jones games. I have the other one. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Indiana Jones and the Lost Memory. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, Black. Call of Duty World at War on the PS2, which is actually a lot of people gave this game crap because they're like, oh, this game sucks compared to the other one, but it's not supposed to be exact same as the PS3 and Xbox 360 one. It's actually a totally different story that's supposed to kind of go side by side with the other ones on the uh, back then, the next gen systems. So it's kind of cool to have this. It's just basically to see it as additional story, is all it is. Um, Swashbucklers, blue and gray, kind of a Civil War. Um, it's basically like a fighting game with uh, maybe like a third person type view fighting, side by side fighting. And it also has like a Sid Meier's type um, pirates uh, battleship type thing where you get your pirate ship and you kind of shoot the other ships and whatnot. But um, Total Overdose on the PS2. Now this one I remember seeing on this 360. I don't remember seeing it on PS2 so I'm going to pick it up. And this one is kind of hard to find. Um, it's not expensive or anything. Made by, I don't know, try to say that, but it's a uh, Made Man. Yeah, Made Man Confessions of Family Blood, and it's basically just a mafia game for the PS2. And from what I hear, it's kind of uncommon, and it's actually a pretty decent game. Here we go, the Godfather of the game. And the majority of all the PS2 games I just showed you, I got at Goodwill. So now I've got a few more things I want to show you. I got a couple of pop figures. I got Hulk Hogan. Because uh, I collect Hogan figures, so. And this one is a Walgreens exclusive. It's a Boba, Pet, uh, Boba Fett prototype. Went ahead and picked that one up. Maybe just see the back. There's a few other Walgreens exclusives that are pretty cool. And uh, I don't really collect the pop figures too much, but if it's something related to something else, I direct, directly uh, collect for or pick it up. But we got Star Wars Shadows of the Empire uh, Nintendo 64 Strategy Guide, which is really cool. It's actually one of my favorite uh, Nintendo 64 games. So. Uh, got this one. I actually got one of these from my buddy Corey Stover as well. Uh, C Stove on YouTube. But it's the World of Nintendo uh, Link figures for Operating of Time 3D. And I think these are supposed to be like a re-release of the ones that came out in the 90s, if I'm not mistaken. So those are kind of hard to find, at least where I live. Um, Andre. The Retro Zapper, yet again, hooked me up with a good deal on a Sega Saturn, which is why he saw these Sega Saturn games, because I finally got a working Sega Saturn. And actually, Captain Natron gave me one as well. He just gave me a uh, Sega Saturn for free. And it powers on, but the disc doesn't spin, so I'm going to uh, take it apart, see if I can fix it. Maybe I can get it working. I've got a couple more games here. These are the NECA, uh, not games, I'm sorry, figures. These are the NECA figures. i got one for Friday the 13th. And basically what these are, are their figures, and the box is made to look like the NES. Um, let's see if I have the game anywhere. But if you know, I'm sure you know what the NES game looks like. It looks exactly like this, the label does. So you open it up. It's got a screenshot from the game. The figure is painted to look like um, the character in the game, so the same colors and everything. And this one actually makes noise, so that's really cool. Uh, I got one for Batman. It's partially sealed. So my tort. Um, I don't know if you can see the back here. But it looks just like the NES box. And they even put some, like, this, uh, this design there. They made it look like it's wore out, like cardboard would be. Um, next thing I got here is a wireless adapter for any PS2 controller that's wired. So you can basically take any controller and make it wireless. I play a lot of PS2, so I got this, so I have my cable stretch across the floor. But yeah, you just plug it in your system and it makes your controller wireless. So I thought that was really cool when I didn't pick that up. I got this at GameStop. I don't go there too often, but uh, they had a special or a discount on their Zelda Skyward Sword figures. So I picked this up for about 70% off, I think. There it is. If you can see that. It's really cool, though. Sorry if you can't see it too well, but pretty heavy too. And see, next thing, this may be about it. This, I mean, it's a ton of pickups, several months worth. I got this at a Goodwill for $4.99, and it's the PS1, but it's the uh, original 
model of it that came out and has all the uh, extra output settings and video audio outputs on it. And I always look for these and I'm never able to find them. And I finally found one, so I went ahead and picked it up. <clears throat> and they're not worth much more than the original uh, regular PS ones, but uh, I still thought it was cool to have. And I believe, I believe that's it, guys. Like I said, I'm just gonna go through everything real fast and show you what I got because it's so much. I don't want to make this video too long. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you check out Captain Natron. Uh, check out Corey Stover, C Stove, and check out the Retro Zapper. Because um, a lot of this stuff came from them as well. But uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.